Hello, my name is Fox Man. Today, I'm at Fox. He Man and the Masters of the Universe. You know, if if you've seen my other reviews on He Man, you know I like He Man. I actually really do. As the universe, I grew up with a 20XX um, cartoon, which was fun. And honestly, I I feel bad in a sense for that show because I think I kind of remember like why is he naked but then like now years later like almost like you know just the first short and now years later I'm like no that design actually works right for what the character is and everything and apparently though a lot of kids that time and that were my age thought like why is he like that and they tried to change it and it less sales and it, it was a whole thing um that being said like I also do like the reboot the reboot is actually pretty fun um the reboot is really fun. I actually really, really, really do like it. But I will say, though, I still probably prefer the cl more classic look or the 20XX look. Um, I don't know. Just, I don't know. Just the, I, just the big ass, like, uh, just pure muscle, I think is freaking badass, though. Skeletor kind of still has that. But in any case, uh, I saw Revolution. I want to watch the trailer for see what pops up and then, you know, use it for clips. So let's just begin in three, two. Death comes for us all, even for kings it comes. But you will have to make a choice. Will you rule as Adam? Like I was talking about the animation, I really, like, like, again, the CGI is fine. I like the CGI show. <coughs> I'm not knocking against that. But this show is goddamn beautiful. Or is he, man? Because it cannot be both. I'll never be half the man or king my father was. What song is this? Eternia needs a king. Why would the power reveal itself to me if I was destined to give it up? You know what? I agree with Adam there. <laughs> There's so many stories right now that it's like, oh, yes. Like, I don't know. I get it. I get it. Some things like it, I like the full Metal Alchemist ending. Spoilers for that, there's kind of a similar thing like that, and it's pretty smart how he uses his power to dupe God. But, like, yeah, like, I, though, endings where the the main character gives up his, gives up the power to, like, help others and stuff like that, it kind of bugs me a bit. Eh, Al House kind of did it better, at least. At least, it's like, it's connected to the soul of this and whatnot. And, honestly, they, they still even hint at, I somehow brought Al House back into this. They still somehow hint that eventually she will get that power back. So I know so. where my talents lie. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure this season has solidified Skeletor probably being my favorite villain. And that's like both Skeletors. This Skeletor is great. That Skeletor is great. But again, like animation-wise, I'm not sure if it'll show it in this. The animation on Skeletor is so good. And they, they use animation to like its fullest extent in this show. On the throne of Eternals. Time for a revolution. He's not it's anyone's throne. Not Skeletor anymore. He's more powerful than ever. It's everyone's fight. I'm here to ask for help. It's winner's rule. Winner. It's winner rules all. Master's technology. Master. There's Keith David again, which I was like, all right. Styro, I remember, told me about it. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, all right. But then let's hear it too. I'm like, hey, there's Husk. Does the universe. Chris Wood, Melissa Gomez, Lena Headley, Keith David. And Mark we Hamm. know how powerful a little magic can be. Yes! <laughs> I yes, I was hoping they were going to show this. Well, I mean, I didn't see... Sorry, back. I uh, had, had a few zozy here. But, uh... Okay, yeah, I'm going to... I want to I wanna, I wanna talk about that. <laughs> like, I love the animation on this entire show, but also I love all the little lore bits of, like, toy lore. I'm pretty sure I was talking about something else, but I'll, I'll bring it up. It's not about what you hold in your hand, but what you hold in your heart. Skeletor. I'm so happy I didn't see this because 
Yeah, you just you completely spoil like uh, multiple things. It's just the beginning. By the power of Grace God. All right. So first off, like if again sp talking about toy lore, like if, if you kind of like I, I learned this, but like originally t like the original He-Man toy. And, like, you know, they would come with little comic books that came with it to tell them the story. One of them, it, like, it showed that, like, the goddess was who taught, who brought the big barbarian who was He-Man to find the one half of the Sword of Power. And eventually, you know, the, the and, like, that, that was a whole thing. Because He-Man would have one part of the power, one part, would have one half of the sword. While Skelter would have the other, and like if you even now if you go look at the origin toys, that is very much like that. Still, you do still see that. You see He Man having you know his sword of power, but then you see Skelter with like a purple version, and you can connect them together to make the full sword of power. And that's very much hinted at in the um, Revelation. In Revelation, it is very much talked about that as well. <coughs> It's where, like, you know, he has to reforge the blades, so he has to go, you know, the preternia and I think subternia to get the two halves and, you know, mush them together and all that. That that was, that was the reason that kind of happened. And 20XX originally was going to do that. But 20XX originally was going to do that. The sword that Skeletor wields, I think I must have brought this up, hold on. This right here was supposed to be that this is He-Man's half of the sword, where this it was Skeletor's half of the sword, and then, you know put it together you have the full power sword that was originally what was going to happen and but like it was supposed to be that skeletor actually kidnapped and took the the full power sword and was using it where then the he-man would have to have a new sword a new sort of power remade for him and yeah this uh, this you know classics like the classic outfit i think is freaking great but uh we have the sort a new sword reforged from which then would come this more mechanical looking sort of power um which i honestly think i do i kind of prefer the idea that this was the original sort of power and then they built this one than this just being the sort of power but whatever um but that being said um that that was a reference in the first season or revolution uh where this obviously like in the first season we do see tila becoming the sorceress which because eventually tila as the goddess evolve into the Funimation Sorceress, pretty much. Evolved into two characters. The Funimation Sorceress, as well as, uh... The Goddess became the Funimation Sorceress, as well as just Tila in general. And then also the whole theory of, you know, Tila being, uh... the Sorceress's daughter. So, yeah, like, that... That's a whole thing. That's a whole thing that... that that's about. But, like, it's cool seeing this. Especially because we, like... A lot of this, this season is broken up, I think, like, I want to say three-ish parts. Yeah, I would say three-ish parts with three main characters. It's broken up into He-Man or Adam's story, it's broken up into Tila's story, and it's broken up into Skeletor's story. Or Skeletech. Um, and then it all, like, culminates. Like, He-Man, after his dad dies of some kind of disease or whatnot, um, his dad tells him, you have to, you know... You either you either have to rule, you either have to choose the sword or the scepter, which I'm just like okay, <laughs> like I'm like really sword or the scepter? I've seen the reboot. I know which one is bad, but <laughs> but no, like the idea of like if he wants to rule or whatever, you know, so on, um, and like that's kind of a, a running theme with this, especially when we all later on find out that uh. And like, very much, it's Adam trying to face being king, and well, trying to be king and all that, and then also dealing with the invasions of mother, his mother computer, who now has Skeletor under his her reach or control, as Skeletech, um, and that then ties in with again that ties in with Adam's story where, uh, Skeletor. Uh, hide, like, hides himself as, it disguises up as Keldor, uh, He-Man's uncle, which, yeah, that's, that, that, the reboot, the reboot obviously played with that straight away, but that was never really confirmed in the original show, which also, 
Um, unless they're gonna play with something, which I think there's a comic that kind of talks about like that. This show definitely is not canon, at least not like fully canon to the original show. Unless we're gonna go with some mind wiping, but I'll 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 get into that later. Um, but <laughs> uh. But a lot of it is uh, Skeletor going, you know, Skeletor, who's working on another computer, who's working for the Horde. Uh, <laughs> give me a minute. Who's working for the Horde, and pretty much, like, Skeletor is being treated like shit. And he's, he's being treated like shit, and also, like, when he's told to disguise himself as Keldor, uh, they, like, he's like, oh, who would have guessed making a fake uncle would be able to get us in and like i think it was in hordak or mother computer who said like who the hell said keldor was fake and and pretty much after skeletor quote unquote embarrasses mother computer mother computer slams his ass into a wall a circuit gets loose where it reconnects some brain tissue or something that allows skeletor to remember bits of keldor as like kind of the joker in arkham knight funny enough um, where, like, he, Skeldor appears to him and, like, taunts him and everything. And pretty much, uh, that follows his story, Skeldor's story arc, where he straight, like, decapitates another computer at one, after they take Castle Grayskull. They successfully take Castle Grayskull and cut He-Man off from his power. Um, they successfully take Castle Grayskull, and then it's a fight, but, <coughs> um... Is it, where is it? Where the hell is that thing? It's, it was like around here somewhere, wasn't it? Yeah, right here. Like, this is... The, after taking over Castle Grayskull, and also, like, the minds of all of Eternia, pretty much. At least part of, uh, of uh, Adam's kingdom. Because he uses William Shatner. Who's William Shatner? Um, but using, like, this nanobots, this nanobot mist that when you breathe in, like, it takes you over, though, that nanobot mist takes you over and makes you, like, kind of like Skeletech, you know, like, the different mechanical parts and stuff merged with your DNA and all that, um, Skele like, and Skeletor pretty much... He's like, and after like being disrespected and all this stuff, he's like, I should be rolling! And cuts off this this lady's head, gives it to Hordak in a box, and then goes after Hordak immediately and goes to kill him too. Like, it, uh, Skeletor is a badass. I really love Skeletor. And even then, like, he had some of the freaking coolest designs. Like, like it's really funny because like, yeah, I get it. This is the classic look. But... Holy shit, is this look not freaking cool. Especially because then he has, like, a a arm. Hold on. Yeah, he has, like, this, this, like, mechanical, like, tendril arm, which I have an idea for a character with a tendril arm. Um, also, that it's been, it's been in my mind for, like, the longest time. And, like, by God, I'm gonna... It's, like, this just makes me want to do it more. But, like, this tendril arm where the Havoc staff is on the ed, end of it. <coughs> and pretty much he goes after Hordak... And he eventually finds out, like, he is, he, like, the whole thing with Hordak and technology and all that stuff eventually leads to him learning even stronger magic. Which is where you get this, this badass form. <laughs> where he uses different technology bits. He'll create more, like, this is where I'd say, like, the reason why I really love animation is because when he, when they're in the final fight, there's some Bad. I'm gonna just gush about Skeletor for a minute. There are some really, really, like, I'll say this, though. Like, I preferred him when he had, like, the hood over, like, one eye. Like, this. Like, that looked, I think, way cooler. But, the, him, like, forming different hands to try to attack He-Man, shoot multiple different blasts, and, like, you know, his legs becoming thrusters, and all this stuff. It's really, really cool. Like, it's, like, that's also the thing I love about this show in general. As I kind of think I even brought up. Like, for certain things, I think I saw it up in the last, for the last Revolution one, is that we, I feel like we do need some more stupider shows 
where I'm not saying this show is stupid, but like we need more shows where like it's almost kind of blatantly to sell product, but in a fun way. Because there's shit like uh, we see He Man's battle armor from like our our damage armor that's here. Uh, this we see this we hit like at one point because to to cut into He Man's <coughs> story because the whole thing is Skeletor kills Hordak you know eventually like he I, he even starts takes over the hordes like minds and everything and the people and stuff um, with his powers and he becomes pretty much you know this badass powerful sorcerer. He-Man's story follows, obviously, him trying to fight with, like, this stuff, giving the kingdom over to Keldor, thinking, like, Keldor will do better, not realizing it's Skeletor, but He-Man's then whole thing is that he needs, like, he finds out that, that like, infectious virus uh, nanites can't affect him, and he can even use the sort of power to, like, burn it away. That's a main thing. So wh what he does is he goes to, uh, let's see here. He go he goes to an old friend, or I think Man at Arms actually goes to an old friend. He because he gives the sword to Man at Arms, who him and Orko go to it. Uh, apparently, an old friend of Man at Arms that can help modify the sword. Which, I love how they modified it. Hold on, hand, let's see. But what you hold in your heart. You kind of saw it there for a second. It's over, Skeletor! There, him, him. And St Styro had to tell me this in the comments of my other video. But, like, this man, like, this man is, like, these two, these two kind of have a whole thing where they kind of have this weird rivalry with each other. I'm like, do they know each other in the show? Is he from the original show? No, he's from the live action movie, which I'm like, okay. And I'm like, but like, he's from the live action movie because he is pretty much their equivalent to Orko, which I was like, huh. I'm like, that's an interesting way to bring those two together. Oh, shit. That's an interesting way to bring those two together. But then you also have other stuff in this too. Like, like, like again, like, because again, this show knows also, it seems like, like I was bringing up the battle armor. Like, when He-Man gives up his sword, he needs to use his battle axe, his classic battle axe, but also uh, the new man-at-arms, uh, Tila's friend, she gives him, like, that armor. He puts it on, and, like, he gives him the armor bit. He's, I don't know what it does other than make him look cool for, like, one fight scene, but, like, he goes, he fights, and you see, because the whole thing about this armor bit, toy-wise, was that, like, you would hit his stomach, or someone would hit the, the chest bit, and it would flip and like flip to like a damaged state, and then it would quote unquote heal by like pressing a button or whatever. And it, you see it go chook chook, and that's pretty much what it does. You see a damage scar on his thing, and it goes chook chook, like it just like regens, I guess, quote unquote, I guess, canon wise. I don't know. They even made a figure of it. I don't know why, I'm not sure why he has a beard, or is this the uh, oh no, this is the I, I can't remember. I don't remember if that's like the one for the show or not. But yeah, like that was I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, that's kinda fun. that's kinda cool. But uh Like, I don't know, you I think we need more stupid shit like that. But yeah, like he he has to get his sword modified, this guy does it. Eventually, like, you know, we see uh What was it? Where is it? Um and like you, the sword gains some cool abilities and even gives He Man himself a new look. But like you can see it right here, like the uh up the the slight upgrade it, like as this little blue line these little yellow lines to it which first i was like okay that's fine i guess i'm like i'm not sure what more it could do like i'm like all right that's fine if that's the quote unquote upgrade that you're not really changing it all that much but then like and the reason why i brought up the 20 20 xx uh masters of the universe is also because of this sword but I, we'll get into that in a minute because then we have the third story, which is following Tila, where, because after the king's death, and also after Revolution, where apparently Evelyn, I, I remember it happened, but I didn't think it was, I saw that was permanent. Evelyn destroys their version of heaven. All that's left is hell, pretty much. Um, and so 
she tries to figure out a way to restore heaven. And it turns out that to do that, to restore heaven, she's going to need the powers of the three, like, Eternian gods? Yeah, they're like Eternian gods, which are, if I remember correctly, yeah, Zor, Ka, and Havoc! Um, <coughs> which is all in the, which she then has to learn to match. Like, she already mastered, I guess, mastered Zor. She learned this also from her mother, whose soul, like, the thing is, like, heaven is gone. There's still hell. And if you don't want to go to hell, you could wander as a soul, I guess, for a bit until you eventually fade off into existence. Which, you know, if you want to go like the idea that souls are energy, I guess I was being just like the energy kind of just eventually dissipates over time and just merges into other things, I guess. But yeah, so she wants to restore heaven because of Andor uh, dying because of his thing. And, you know, he's eventually just going to disappear. His eternal soul is going to disappear for all eternity. Not Eterna, not Eternia. But so she basically travels to. Which I didn't know, or maybe not, but I know I definitely looked him up afterward, and it turned out they gave him a very big redesign. <laughs> they gave hey, this big ass, badass motherfucking dragon. Because I'm just like, oh my god, I love this so much. <laughs> like, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, I saw the dragon, like, oh my god, there's a giant ass dragon. And eventually, towards the end, there's a big, like, when there's the big out, all out war, there's a big ass kaiju fight against this big ass dragon against a, a horde tentacle robot thing. I'm like, that is freaking cool. That is badass. I love that. But <clears throat> pretty much, Tila, first stop after, after, you know, mom tells her all this stuff, is that she goes to. This guy was, I don't, what was his name? Uh, Gwildor, no, not Gwildor. I'm pretty sure I, I wrote down his name. Oh, no, I think I just literally called him the dragon. <laughs> well, the dragon here, he apparently is one of the wielders of Ka, which Ka is, where is it? The, if Zor is the falcon eagle magic, what? what is the fa eagle handsome or handsome is the eagle magic ka is, uh, like you know it's the magic for i guess the humans i don't really know like like for yeah i'm not really sure like I, I know there's a whole lore thing but like i can't remember if the power i don't think the power comes just from zor i think the power is its own thing and then there's also different stuff but like uh, Ka is the Snake Man's uh, power. That's their magic. So where you have the Falcon for Zor, you Ka is for the Snake People. Which you know, if you've seen the reboot, you know who the Snake People are. Or the twenty XX one, you know who the Snake People are. I don't I remember correctly. Like Lord Hiss and all that stuff. I don't think appear in the original Masters of the Universe. But yeah, but apparently he's the guardian. I guess yeah, he's the guardian of that. He's the guardian of that magic. So we see him, uh, so we, so eventually Tila has to learn to master that one, which that one's like more carnal primal rate powers and stuff. And like, we see right here where, also mind you, this guy's dying because of everything that happened with revolution turning all that stuff. And evil Lin is there, uh, protect, like acting as his nursemaid till he dies as a way of repenting and to get her back in the story. Um, but with, Eva Lin's help, she's able to convince the dragon, because the dragon's like, I'm not gonna help you! But eventually convinces the dragon to, uh, give the, uh, to give the, uh, shit. To give Ka to Tila, which she gets. And which, with it, comes with its own, which comes with its own spear, which you don't see, staff here. So, <coughs> We see, like, you know, the Zor staff is the classic, like, eagle, white eagle, you know, thing. Actually, hold on. This is the reboot staff, but it, it, it gets the idea up for her. That it, she, that, like, this is the Zor one. There is a snake one, which is, like, the golden snake cobra thing. Think Jafar's staff. And then you also, which, like, when she masters this form, which one? Yeah, I like this form a lot. I like this form a 
Like, all of Tila's forms look really, really good. I just like the snake one more. I don't know why. But, yeah, the snake one I really like. And then eventually, you know, when she masters the power of Ka, Evelyn's like, well, you know where the last one is for Havoc. Uh, which we find, which we not, which we know is, um, you know, attached to Skeletor's hand, giving him, like, that drag, that, like, uh, <laughs> uh, Megatron, like, art dragon hand cannon kind of thing from, uh, I think Beast Wars, I think it was one of the Beast Wars. So I was like, all right, I don't think I get that off. They eventually do rip it off. I, I can't remember if He-Man does it or whatnot, but yeah, they eventually rip it off. Tila is able to gain all three staffs, and pretty much right here is when, like, she's trying to focus it, which also, it's cool seeing when she's, like, dueling the magics. Like, right there, like, that's so bad. And pretty much her use, trying to use all three powers of Kazor and Havoc. It's, tr while trying to restore e uh, Preternia, while also, like, there's a war going on around her, and, you know, everyone's trying to protect her, while also He-Man's fighting Skeletor, and all this stuff. Um, it looks like the, po the three powers are going to rip her to shreds. And eventually, like, He-Man has to go up to her, you know, holds her, holds her and goes, you know, I have the power. And we see, like, the, you know, lightning bolt come down, hit him, and you see the you see him gain uh, his own new form. It's over. This new badass transformation form, which I love, like, I'm not sure if, like, this is just something they're, like, trying to put throughout all of them, or if this was in the original ones or not, but I love that there, or, like, if there, this was a time kind of with a little bit with the, because you could technically say the reboot is a, is a sequel to the original, to this series, possibly, but, um, he's, like, mark on his back. But, like, the, that He-Man symbol of the H with the M through it. I'm trying to think of, like, I think maybe 20X X had it, too. But, yeah, like, he gains that symbol. He gets, like, these cool bass golden armor, long badass hair tied up in a, like, like a little ponytail kind of thing. And then, like, you have Castle Grayskull symbol on his arm. <coughs> Which I also, I always love shit like that where it's, like, a power the character has. And then it evolves to a new state, like, not just the transformation, because transformation is one thing where it's, like, su like, Super Saiyan. Like, we're, we'll see Super Saiyan 1, but then we'll switch to Super Saiyan 2, and so on. And this is, like, if Goku could, like, whenever he transformed, he just transformed straight into another thing, and it really wasn't, like, a way to go back, or it wasn't really a reason to go back. Though, I will say this, though, because the idea of different transformations having different abilities actually kind of pulled me back more into that whole thing, where, like, I think, was it, Super Saiyan 2 is more about speed, if I remember correctly, speed-wise, where Super Saiyan 3 is more, like, brutal strength and all that stuff. Though, I couldn't tell that right away, so... But I love the idea of different transformations and all that. But I love, like, just, like, the whole upgrade thing, like, Ben 10,000 in the Ben 10 show, where, like, you see the Omnitrix, like, now is a big-ass massive gauntlet across his arms. Like, I love shit like that. You see... But, yeah, you see... He-Man with this new form and his sword, like, you notice the little yellow lines are gone because his sword actually does have a different state where it's, again, pulling from, like, 20XX idea of having it to where it's also a little bit more mechanical and it's kind of similar to this where it, like, opens up when, like, it's fully charged because he, well, the way he fights Skeletor... Yeah, right there, you see it. When he fights Skeletor, like, uh, Skeletor will... And that's another thing I like, the ability to absorb magic. Anyways, that's a whole thing that you will hopefully all see soon at some point. But... In a certain story. But, uh, magic, like, he shoots, uh, Skeletor will shoot a magic, shoot magic out. And, like, he will you bring up his sword, and, like, you know, he's, like, if they will hit it, and it'll, like, these are, like, like, set, like, three different charges. Like, that's one, two, three charges. And when it's fully charged, that's when it, like, opens up into this new form. Yeah, you even see, you even see a little bit right here where it's just only one right here. Like, I'm pretty sure when they hit right here, like, that boosted his charge like immediately if i'm remembering correctly but yeah these two like th the final battle like i legit want to go and just rewatch again because the animation on that was so good also to say this too right here where he does we have i have the power and stuff like 
uh, Tila also gets a new transformation. Where because each each of these sta- each of these staffs, she gains a new transformation. If she's transformed into Zora, it's her classic. Uh, it's the classic like uh, or her version of the sorceress outfit. Having it's like this long horned demon kind of form. When she turns in the Ka, she turns into that snake form. But then when she eventually merges all together and the staffs merge themselves, it's like a snake, whatever. Uh, actually, let me see. Can I? No, not yet. Well, you, see, you have her, her habit form or her Ka form. But uh, she gains her own form where it's cool because where He-Man has now like Castle Grayskull on his pauldron... She gains a a blue light. Actually, let me see. No, because pre-turning is what it's called. But like, but she gains uh, the headpiece of this. She gains the headpiece of uh, this lion thing that ties into it. And like, when they do that, they bring back heaven. Preternia. They uh, and this is like like the cut. Like apparently in the center of all this, uh, there's a giant. But also, I'm not sure how tied this is because Preternia here looks. It's not like, it looks like it's a physical place, not like just heaven. Well, that's, I don't know. But yeah, these, this map is freaking cool. But uh, she gains like a cool blue uh, like headpiece. And she has like the He-Man like trunk, furry trunks, but they're blue. And like all these other stuff. And like, like, like and then the, the tri-staff like together, she's now the tri-priest. I'm like, that's so freaking cool. <laughs> I'm like, I love that design. It sucks that I can't, I don't know where it is. Motu Revolution Tila. Cause that that's her that's her Zora form. We saw her call form as a snake one. Do they hold on. Oh wait, is it here? It is here. Okay, yeah, this is it. Watch. Well, I'm not gonna go. Yeah, see the sword opens up. Which I always love a cybernetic like sword. That's one of the things like uh, Blood of Zeus I actually kinda of really like that sword. Also, there's a whole subplot that, like, now they're finally, like, admitting they're in love. Also, he's now not Man of Worms. He's, he's, uh, Man at War. Oh, so that's an inside joke because when they're having feelings for each other and Orc of Bunny, he's like, what are you guys doing? Training. So pretty much, like, Adam doing this, like, synchronized all that power inside of her and him. They have their own magic girl transformation. Like, and like, it's not even like a joke. Like, this looks like, like Sailor Moon. Yeah, like, that's a straight Sailor Moon. Or, hell, there was another reference, too. What was it? Like, I, like, oh, man, what was it called? There was a, oh, yeah, the dragon. At one point when he's fighting the giant techno thing. And we'll get into this again. When he's fighting the giant techno thing, he goes at one point, like, by the by the flame of Ka or something like that. And then he says in Draconic or Dragon, You shall not pass! And blows the freaking robot up with a, with a Ka blast. I'm like, oh my god! He's there? Hold on, give me a minute. Nosey! So, like, he, like, I'm, like, you, he goes, you shall not pass. I'm like, all right. I'm like, weird, like, that's, like, it was badass, and you gave it to a goddamn dragon. So I'm not mad. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, that is so an obvious call thing. And you had him say it in Draconic, too, which is badass. But, like, also, I was like, that was a weird, like, I didn't expect the Lord of the Rings reference. Just, like, I kind of really didn't expect a straight, like, magic girl transformation here. Also, like, again, like, yeah, see. I love that shit. I love, I love that symbol that he has on his arm. I love, I love that Grayskull symbol. I don't know. It's so good. And then I love, like, now that she has, you know, the pre turning a lot blue lion head thing on her head. I'm like, that's cool. I think this is probably one of Tila's like best 
best outfits. I re legitimately love this outfit. I legit love this He-Man outfit. Like, it looks sick. I love it. Especially, like, the blue crystal thing. I love that shit. Have you seen uh, my little Sailor No pilot, like, things I've done with uh, Susan No? Like, the light blue with the darker blues, making it look a little crystal-y kind of thing. I love that shit. I love it a lot. I love this outfit. Um, freaking gold badass, the arm plate. <clears throat> wow, I love it. And then the new He-Man symbol. This, like, this is cool. And pretty much, you know, big battle happens. Skeletor eventually gets beaten. And then, uh, oh shit. Skeletor eventually gets beaten and, uh, Zoe, calm down. My mother's at the window. Uh, eventually gets beaten and, you know, you have the whole, uh, Death comes for us all. God damn it. What? Handsome! What? That's still recording, that's still recording. Okay, I don't know what you did. What? Okay. That's still recording, that's still recording, that's still recording. Okay, I don't know. But, yeah, they, like, they have their whole, there's the whole big battle between these two, which is just, again, animated beautifully, and I love it, the different transformations that Skeletor goes through, the different powers. Um, we see some other faces return when Preternia comes up, which is freaking great. I don't even want to spoil that. It's cool. It's badass. And then eventually, um, <coughs> it's funny enough, this ends similar. Both the, both the reboot and, like, Revelations both ended in a very similar way, uh, like one of their seasons did. And then, actually no, the last season of the reboot ended, like they pretty much did two different endings. Like two plot points that are, one ending for the reboot, they did for this. Where last season, or Revelation, uh, the, the big ending, like, oh my god, Hordak! <laughs> the Horde! They're gonna be in the next season! Oh my god! And then the reboot. What happens? We find out Evelyn is, I guess, the daughter of Hordak. And it's like, we find the daughter of Hordak, and, you know, the Horde is coming! And it's like, oh shit! Also, does that mean that, like, this blue bat wings that the Horde has their own magic power, too? Or no, because they're tech-based. They're not magic-based. But then again, Evil Lynn uses magic and his battle. So yeah, it probably was. Um, but yeah, so you have you have that. It's just like okay. Um, <coughs> you're like okay, fine, whatever. Uh, but no, you like, you have that. And then in this, you have the same again. You have those horror things. But in this, it has a similar thing too because uh, Skeletor eventually, you know, he says like you know because eventually, I guess. Because Skeletor or Keldor was the firstborn, he was technically supposed to become king, but because it was a, he was a, a bastard that it didn't happen, but uh, bastard as in, you know, not wedlock, wed thing, yeah. So, that's the reason he never became king, and then he says, like, you know, you're taking my crown, and he was like, we gave you your crown, and look what you did with it. You screwed up. You chose... You used to be Keldor, but you chose to be Skeletor, which you do see his face melting when that happened. And also, um, let's see, where is it? Is it around here somewhere? Because there's also other references to different toy things. Because obviously the, the main ones that people are going to know is uh, Castle Grayskull, which the whole cybernetic thing is when it got captured by, you know, the, by uh, the cybernetic stuff. This is a long ass review, I'm sorry. I, I was thinking of like shortening these reviews, but I don't think it's going to happen. He's not Skeletor anymore. He's more powerful than ever. I'm here to ask. Let me see, where is it? I s yeah, right here, right here. Okay, so you can only see it a little bit here. But this, because again, you know Snake Mountain. You know Castle Grayskull. Castle Grayskull is the, the main one people know of He-Man for play sets. Then you obviously have the... Uh, Snake Mountain, which is, like, I'd say, the second one. Like, I don't think my, my dad didn't even know that Snake Mountain, there was a toy of that when he was a kid. Then, like, you get into the rare shit, like, pre it's like, three towers and stuff. That's, like, probably one of the more rare ones that came out at the very end of Motu. This is another one that I'm not sure where it came out on, but this is the Fright Zone. Like, it's like this, 
Um, actually, let me see, because I can probably... Sorry, I kind of got pulled away during the recording of that, and like I kind of lost my train of thought for a minute. But pretty much, I'm showing these images right now, because where Skeletor or Keldor and the Hordak were training was this playset, the Fright Zone playset. Which, it's kind of amazing that this popped up, because I I had to Google it to see if this was an actual playset at one point when I was like really interested in seeing all the different playsets from the original Motu, and I saw this one, which, yeah, I kind of see why it didn't take off, like, let's say Castle Grayskull, but it's cool that they added it into the show. Like, right here. Yeah, okay, so that's Keldor. Keldor, you know, re reinvigorates all of his memories. They see, like, his people, who are, like, these blue people, like, are more tech-based. And, like, that that was a big selling point. Like, Keldor, like, doesn't know magic, quote-unquote. But he uses all this. He goes to the Horde, who is all about, like, technology. Uh, let's see. The, like, Horde... Horde uh, Hordak actually gave Skeletor the Havoc Staff. Melsa's face is freaking cool. Okay, in here. Here! Because we're gonna need this. We're gonna need this scene. God, just look at his bass. You really are Keldo, son of Miro, his firstborn. What? Who? Is that? Is that? Is that, uh. William Shatner? Cause I thought that was J.K. Simmons for a minute. Cause I was say he even looks like him. Yeah, like that's Horda. Yeah, and the thing is, like, so like, you know, but like, like the original, like the He-Man reboot, uh, Skeletor or becomes Keldor. They take away all the havoc, all this magic power. He becomes Keldor again. He's locked in the throne room. Uh, He-Man has this whole thing of, oh, like, you know, my, my castle is destroyed, I shouldn't be king, you all should, the people should rule themselves. Does my shadow look like it's, like, off by, like, a second? Am I gonna die? Is that... <laughs> I don't know, it looked weird, it looked like my shadow was off or something. But, uh, he's like, you should rule yourselves, you know, make your, you know, a government, and I'll just, you know, I'm out of a house, Tila, can I live with you in Castle Grayskull? Which I'm just like... All right, that's fine. I'm okay with that. But I'm just like, really? Did you have to dissolve the monarchy and like kings and stuff like that? They do also another cool reference thing too is uh, during the final battle, uh, not, not this, but like uh, the queen comes in in her rocket ship in the green outfit or green spacesuit because there was a different toy brand I think of that Mattel was working on or something where it was about spacecraft people and there's like a red, yellow, blue one. But there isn't a green one, and the reason why there is like this was like Earth space toys and all that stuff. And but the reason why there wasn't never a green one is because the green one went on and tested a uh, a uh, experimental ship that sent her off into a black hole, and eventually she landed in Eternia because that because uh, that's the thing. Like he uh, Dora and uh, Adam are actually half human from Earth. Like that's a whole thing. That's where. Her, their mom is from, which is kind of funny. Also, apparently, Eternia was very more tech-based before magic happened. Which I kind of like that idea that, like, because there was magic, people kind of just didn't use technology, so it kind of dissolved away to using more magic. It's, it's, it's an interesting idea. But, cutting back to this, and there is, when we're going through these memories, we have this memory here, where it's obviously when He-Man was, or Adam was a baby... Yeah, the mom. See, I also like her colors green and stuff. Yeah, so. Oh, look at that! Actually, no, you straight see it. You, they, man, they really hinted like one. This is Keldor here, or oh, look, there's a toy castle, Grayskull. Eh. We see Hordak here, and he's carrying something, which you straight even see it here. That there's two cribs, and the one that's fallen over is the one with pink in it, because. In her original origin story, she gets kidnapped and given to Hordak by Skeletor, 
Who is she? she <laughs> Because it ends... <coughs> <coughs> when this ends and the monarchy's dissolved and all this shit, um, he like he man, uh, uh, evil Lin apparently is now considered good, good, good Lin, which also uh, like uh, the dragon who thought he was gonna go to hell for all the evil things because he helps in self sacrifice himself and then he went to heaven with all the other ones, like everyone else. Um, but that was like, and then like after credit scene, apparently evil Lin joins a group of. A group of people who, I guess, watch the multiverse? I don't know. I remember I've seen the toy that it is of his before, but I don't know what that's about. I guess it's just, like, the multiverse thing. But then also, another one, it shows a a, a woman. It almost looks like a female Hordak, but it's a helmet that she's wearing. Because you see, like, walk up, and you see Hordak after uh, Skeletor, quote-unquote, killed him. Like regenerating like a pit, like one of those like uh, bath the tanks from Star Wars, and she goes like you know soon ho- soon Lord Hordak you will you know heal and be- you will he you will heal and we will take he turn you see her take off the helmet and place it down you don't see her face and again if you're and I think this is probably like how people felt how like comic book fans felt when uh, after the Avengers movie and like you you know. You, they showed like some big ass purple guy, and everyone, and you know, all the fans were like, "Oh my god, it's the Infinity War! They're gonna see the Infinity War!" Well, people like me, um, I should just make sure all this recording. Okay, yeah. where people like me uh, don't didn't know even what the Infinity Gauntlet or Infinity War was. So, like, like I learned all my shit through, uh, you know the 1994 Spider-Man show and a little bit of X-Men and stuff. So I, and whatever little bits that my brother told me about, like he, he's the one who told me about the clone saga and that Peter Parker isn't the actual Peter Parker. Um, if you know, but if you do know, well, like he man, I feel like this is that, that case, because if you do know about he man lore and you do know that that is Despara, who is kind, who is the, one of the leading commanders of the Horde, and, like, well, I think Horde is, like, I think right-hand person next to, like, Shadow Weaver, and she is, uh, Adora! <laughs> it's Adora! They are bringing she into this! And, because that, the thing is, like, some of you might wonder, like, well, like, you know, like, like, why that's such a big thing, other than, you know, people who like she It's also pretty much a big thing, because... When Mattel made She-Ra and all that stuff, it, she was part of the He-Man universe and all that. But the toy, the female toy makers in Mattel, if I remember correctly, like were like the female department was like, "Why are you making girl toys? Well, that should be our thing." And like, there was a whole like copyright thing with that, and then there was a different copyright thing of like Sony getting the rights to to He-Man, where like, for like. Like making stuff where, uh, was it that they gained the rights to He Man, where Sony, where DreamWorks gained the rights to She Ra, and you know, it's the whole thing. So, this shows either something, either they're gonna try to pull some kind of twist of like, okay, yeah, we're gonna have She Ra, we're gonna have She Ra and in this, but also. Like, you like, I don't know if, like, it's only going to be, like, the toy version. Because I guess the toy version is still under the He-Man banner, but not, like, the classic she one. Like, mind you, I don't, I don't expect this she I don't. Unless there was some really big deal and, like, we're going to get, like, some kind of reference. And, like, I don't expect her design to look like this. I expect her design either to be the classic one or something, or, like, the how the toy looks. Because the toy itself, the original toy of she looks very different from... Uh, the cartoon version. But yeah, she was going to be in the next season, which I'm like, hell yes, that's what I want to see. But, okay, yeah, but yeah, this, this show was great. I like this a lot. Again, I love He-Man. There's a reason why I got these figures. Um, freaking great. I, the Hord, Hordak design, I ain't gonna lie, I did like the she one better. This is, but this is like, if you want like a monstrous vampire looking dude, like, that's more ugly-ish. Like, yeah, this 100% works. Um, 
Even though this also does work too. I like the slender more one. But, eh, you know what? It's fine, especially because this is more of the classic timeline where the look. And again, like the reason why I say the timeline is not the original timeline is because yeah, She-Ra, he may already know who She-Ra is at this point. If this was the original cartoon timeline. But yeah, this show is great. I liked it a lot. I'm very happy with it. Like, it's really fun. I'm really hoping we're going to get uh, part two of it. Because, like, that was the thing, too. I'm like, man, like, a bunch of people made up at such a stink about the first two seasons. Like, I don't know if we're going to get a season three. We got it. So hopefully in the next season we'll all see it. But thank you for watching the videos. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Or part two, I guess. Or season, whatever. Thank you for watching. Please share my videos. Hopefully you enjoyed this. And we will. See you later. But yeah, like, I have legit... And again, like, the whole thing of, like, you know, like, more toy-based things. Because, again, there's no reason He-Man needed that spinner thing. It was always to sell figures, new figures of that. But, like, come on. Like, if we're gonna get cool designs and shit, that'd be awesome. Like, I'm kind of pissed that they didn't give us a cool new Battle Cat outfit with He-Man's upgrade.